Have you ever NPK tested your compost before using it? It's so quick and easy. We can do these home tests to get a generalized sense of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And while NPK fertilizers, you know, they're not good. They're simplified. I'm not condoning that. NPK testing, especially just a quick test, effortless, is really important. Now, I'll get into why in a second, but first, I was at the Austin Public Library this past week doing a talk on regenerative soil microscopy, and no one there, and this was people interested in compost and soil, no one there had ever tested their compost before applying it. And I, and these are certified, some of these people are certified soil cons consultants and experts, and it's kind of wild because if you have high levels of nitrates, it's bad for the plants, causes disease and, and pests to come and attack the plants, causes over vegetative growth, dark green leaves, no fruit. And if it has high phosphorus, it inhibits fungi, it inhibits mycorrhizal development and spread. So when we don't have a lot of phosphorus, it's the mycorrhizal fungi that mines for it and increases availability up to 10,000 times. But when it's the reverse situation, fungi doesn't feel like it's needed and it's also, it just can't do it. It just can't persist. So if you have a pile that like has all these fungal spores in it, yet has a high phosphorus level, then you know you're going to inhibit those spores from doing their thing properly. And, and if you've got high nitrate, you know that you need to treat that pile with something like EM or lab in order to turn it, all that, those nitrates into amino acids. Or you need to age it longer and maybe combine that pile with some wood chips or ramial wood chips would be better. And then that would digest for six months to a year or even longer in some areas, uh, some drier areas if you're not watering it yourself. And, and then you would be able to have more fungal, more balance, more ammonium in that pile. And so it's really important that we do this because if we just blindly add compost and our composts are high in nitrates or high in phosphorus, we will get the opposite of the effect that we desire. And not only that, we will set our gardens back and we'll cost ourselves money and time and effort and energy if we're bringing in biofertilizers, inoculants, and, and other nutrients. The excess amount of most nutrients causes the blocking of, of availability of other nutrients or at least the reduction of availability of other nutrients. So this idea of coherence of everyone, you know, finding buffering with organic matter and then within certain ranges so that they don't have antagonism is, is really powerful because of that. So we don't want to disturb that with our composts. And this is why we can take our compost, almost any state that they're in, make compost teas and, and, and give it the right foods and shift it. But again, you're kind of erasing, you're feeding that level of, of, of biology into another. It's much better to start with the, your goal in mind and to cue things all the way through. But if you're starting from scratch, you're starting from a nitrate heavy pile, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. And, and the, the, one of the major reasons why you do not want to add nitrate rich compost is because nitrates require four times as much water to process in a plant. And so the plant ends up with these cells that are filled with water. You may have heard this before, water growth. And, and they're really big, they're really tall, they're not nutritious. If you tasted the fruit, it wouldn't be sweet, it would be watery. That is the situation. And you've had it a billion times at the grocery store and you're like, eh, that wasn't so great. That's what that was. That was synthetic nitrate and water and that was crappy growth. Mm. So, and nitrates aren't good for us, you know, the, the plants carry them when they don't process them. And when we digest them, we have to process them and it's not good for our liver and kidneys to deal with like excess nitrates. So we should really consider something um, that you can use multiple times. This is the Lamont NPK, NPK kit and you have these 
the little test tubes that you use and little tablets and acti like active reagents and all these different things and you wait set times and then you, like many of these tests, you're going off color. Like the Solvita test, um, it's over there, but that, that's also color coordinated and they actually have a color reader, a digital color reader that's actually very precise. So, so the future is AI color reading the color wheels for us, like with an app where they're like going, and then they're giving you a much more precise readout than this. And that's, that, that, that could happen today if someone cared enough. And so um, in that, who has those skills? And so we, we are at the cusp of changing everything. I recently did a compost NPK test and it was off the charts with nitrates. It was off the charts with phosphorus. And yes, it has spores, but it's going to be all that's going to be inhibited by the phosphorus. So it's really, it's really critical that we understand what goes into our piles, how the piles are treated and the final nutrient analysis, how they all relate. And the only way to do that is to map this and keep track of this. So when you're putting your compost down on there, you're going to maybe list the ingredients, maybe list the compost style, uh, the time periods, the temperatures, all those details, because it's in those details that we're going to figure out the next level. And that's why the regenerative soil database is such a powerful idea. It came to me, I, I, I'm kind of still in shock that, th that it was like the, this tale that like came out of nowhere on this book and course project and it just shifted everything and just started shifting everything to its own rhythm. And the R Soil database is a way that all of us can start participating in the science and adding transparently and anonymously if we choose, of course, farms and compost companies are all going to want people to see how their results look in comparison to their own so that they order from them and inoculate their home piles or just order from them and use their compost. It, this is the start of something completely new that's going to change everything for everyone. It's going to make everyone better and the cream will rise to the top and the best soils will be ranked and will be found and we will be able to showcase those people and their good work and good examples and spread that because the true regenerative farmers, gardeners and researchers are going to rise to the top and it's transparent. We're going to design it so people can just use it like a library. Everyone can have access and for the deeper analytics, be able to compare all the things that's for members, but people who sign up for the Kickstarter, almost all of the different levels include membership. So check out the link, join us. It's going to be amazing. The future of soil science is here and it involves all of us working together, helping each other understand ways that we can, you know, take our old microscopes and do new tricks with them so that we can start doing things that $7,000 microscopes can do. And I'm going to be talking about later this week. So subscribe, stay tuned, get ready because I'm still innovating new protocols. I, I can't seem to stop. They keep coming to me and I keep finding things. I was studying forensics this week and finding things in different uh, nanometer wavelengths that open an entirely new door infrared. And so we're at the cusp of a lot of new breakthroughs and new ways to visualize things and to combine those visualizations to create a truer picture. A truer picture than we've ever witnessed. A truer picture than any soil scientist has ever seen. And it's gonna be all of us witnessing it together, talking about it, discussing, sharing, going deeper, and changing all of farming, all soil management, all horticulture, all university science because this is going to bleed out into all the other sciences. They're going to copy the way that what we're doing here. It's going to happen. And then it's going to change all food. <sighs> That's going to change all health. There's a trophic cascade of change waiting to happen here. So join us 
click the link below, join the Kickstarter, see what it's all about, donate whatever you can, share it with everyone because folks that want to work on a microscope that are excited by all of this, uh, they're not everyone and that's okay, but we need everyone <laughs> to share this to find those individuals. And then also if you feel called to this, know that we're creating new ways for cheaper microscopes to do all the new protocols even the epifluorescence. So stay tuned and get excited because if you want to be part of this, you absolutely can. All right. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly at Learn Daily and live regeneratively and test your compost and PK. Test your compost pH. Let's start doing the basic tests that we can do at home for cheap Let's get the, you know, the meters for salinity, for CEC. Let's start collecting these things over time and start adding them into our repertoire so we can truly understand the behavior of our soil over the year and how it compares to our bioregion, how it compares to itself over time, and how we are progressing and how the methods we've chosen are working. Thank you for being part of this. It's going to be amazing. We're already 51% funded, so click the link and join us. It's going to change the world.